saw you standing there in the frozen food, apple pajama, bottoms rolled down, some chunky monkey and a smile. I smiled back, walk up, and I ask you your name. You tell me Tracy with an eye, and I start to play the game. Where you from? What you doing? Are you seeing anyone? Dental hygiene is training. Hey, that sounds like fun. Fast forward two weeks, me and Tracy are dating. Took her to Disney on ice, no more masturbating. We're in love, and yo, I love everything about her. Even the dolphin tattoos that I saw in the shower. I love her fake tan. It don't get no better. Her belly button with the Roxy sticker on her Jedi. When my birthday comes around, I know I'm getting pasta. The way I have to fuck her quiet when her roommate's at home Even though we can't fuck until American Idol ends Yo, I love my white girlfriend She's up for lower middle class This party's no girl Shake that ass, I wanna hold you Cause I love my white girlfriend Oh girl, I will do anything You make me want to buy a ring She might use teeth But I love my white girlfriend I do I love my white girlfriend Let me count the ways South Beach on on Atkins on even days the way she's grouchy in the morning till she's at the Starbucks even when two men I still yeah I love her flat one summer only good things tell them nothing but good things tell them that's that's it fuck yeah only good things only good it's good it's the continuation I don't know it's once again it is summer summer don't don't turn that dial motherfucker don't don't this is a this is if there was a page turner and in podcast form this would be it you you're you're fucking hopelessly addicted to us there's nothing you can do yeah, you need luck. to hear good luck quitting yeah we can't quit zero percent zero percent success rate on quitting the podcast. exactly i have i don't know of anyone who was who has listened to this and then stopped Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. There's a caveat there, but I don't. I don't. I don't, I don't have to. Uh, I won't. There's only a pause. There's a pause between episodes. In which case, I expect you to be listening to a backlog. It's not it's super deep with the, with the lore. Yeah, the, all all of the kooky characters that we have introduced throughout the years. Um, yeah, summer of good baby. We're just talking about that good. Those good things because I don't have enough time in my life for bad stuff right now. If I'm being honest. <laughs> yeah, I say I say having watched Scoob oh, in the yeah. past week. I think you already they already talked about we already talked about Yeah, Scoob. yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's only optimism now. You're playing Burnout Paradise. Yeah, yeah. Per- um, playing Burnout Paradise, listen to my favorite albums. It's 2007 again. <laughs> Everything's okay. Yeah, yeah. Everything, Call of Duty's everything fun. Is, everything is good and normal. I love it. I love it when things are good. My friends invited That's me over today. They're like, all about. they're like, do you want to come watch Artemis Fowl with us? It's like, it's, <laughs> and, 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 and I'm like, no. Of I course. Think, I think I'm all right. I'm going to play Burnout. <laughs> <laughs> Did that, I, guess, I guess that came out, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I heard it compared to, um, I don't know if this is possible, but I heard it compared to A Wrinkle in Time in terms of. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But um, mm. which which would make it like nearly incomprehensible. <laughs> um, anyway, yeah. Uh, um, I've been reading. Yeah, I've been reading. I've been I reading. Uh, I you know what? I, I haven't been asking, so I'm not sure why you're. Oh my god! You're bringing that one up. I don't, I'm not, oh we're not here god. for books. We're here for good things. It's the summer of good. The summer of good. It's fine. You can talk. You can talk about. That. I read. I read seventy pages of the road in one sitting last night. Oh, what to the optimism? <laughs> well, no. Speak, speaking of a page turner, it's, it's, <laughs> it's really it's like a it's like a speed run of a book because you need to get it over with because it's like oh god oh mm-hmm. you just because the the longer you're on the page the more you have to experience the suffering. So there's the brief moment of, of levity when you turn the page and you're like, oh, right, it's just a novel. I'm still here. Yeah, I was like, oh, God, <laughs> it just keeps getting worse. And you just have to tear through it and, and not uh, let any of it uh, affect you. Otherwise, you'll be traumatized. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's not if... a joke. Yeah, I don't I, – um, I feel like – I mean, I'm not an expert, but I feel like you would kind of want to ramp up slowly on the Cormac McCarthy <laughs> – you know, just up the violence little by little until you reach the road, maybe <laughs> towards the end. Yeah, I tried reading uh, that the, they they kill horses, don't they, or whatever. Um, and it mm-hmm. was uh, impossible for me to read coming from a traditional novel because he has this sort of... Um, they shoot horses? 
They shoot horses, don't they? Yes. They, that's they, it. they murder yeah. horses. <laughs> They've been murdering horses. I was thinking of the killer of sheep, but anyway. Um nah. Uh, they they kill horses, don't they? And uh, shoot. that they shoot horses, don't they? And uh, it's a real struggle to read because of the way he writes in that one. But um, it's a lot easier to wrap my head around uh, the road. It seems uh, because it's it's basically my life now out here. <laughs> Straightforward misery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so I'll let you know how that goes when I finish it tonight. <laughs> I think I know what happens at the end of the road. You don't have to let me know. Uh-huh. Well, I don't know any of that. Don't spoil it. I think okay. it's gonna be okay. They're gonna to get to the end of the road. It's gonna be chill. <laughs> There's a very happy ending. Yeah, okay. yeah. They're gonna figure it out. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah. So, speaking of uh, movies, that's a movie, also. But uh, we we're talking about more more movies. We've done. Oh, we did a we did a series last. We did the Tommy Galaxy. Um. A lot of movies, though. I feel like either one of these movies could have been a could have been a whole episode. Oh yeah. I took a lot of notes on one of these movies. Um, yeah, it's uh, uh, we. I watched. You've already you already, you already seen both of these. This is my Correct. yes. This is your turn to make me watch stuff. So I watched. Um, I watched Weathering with you. Yes, which is a movie from last year. We were going to do that a couple episodes ago, but the Blu-ray was not available at my local library yet. And so I picked it up mm-hmm. in 4K. Um, I thought it was the official subtitles. I don't. I still don't know if they were. They were almost uh, unreadable. It was like they were made by oh, someone no. who, who it wasn't even like that. They are wasn't even that they were bad at English. It was like they were blind because <laughs> it was all these letters that looked like other letters like it was just like t's replaced with l's and sevens and shit oh. and just weird just weird shit um but i got i knew what they were saying anyway so i didn't uh-huh. actually miss anything it was just like a little distracting anyways it's makoto chinkai he's uh he's really uh he's uh he's he's really fucking full of himself now huh yeah, he's riding high off of the success of making the most successful film ever. The most, exp- the most, uh, yeah, the most financially, the most um, highest grossing anime film of all time. Yeah, so he, he thinks he's hot shit now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. See, um, he went from he went this, from making his little indie dramas, mm-hmm. and now he's like, I'm gonna fucking, go, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fucking bat back to back, baby. We're going for the back to back grand slams. This movie, by the way, number five highest grossing anime movie of all time. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, so it's, uh, yeah, he is. I've only seen this and in your name, which is the big one. Um, I was reading about his other things. Have you seen Voices of a Distant Star? Is that the feature? I think so. Yeah. Voices of the Distant. Uh, that, that's the one where it's a communication between two people who like. Yeah. Vi- yeah. 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 I've seen it. Oh yeah, okay. I just yeah, read yeah. the plot and now it was like, oh, two people are in space and they're communicating, but they're getting farther away. And I was like, oh, okay, I know everything that happens. In yeah, that. that's ex- that. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I, I would consider that one not worth watching. Uh, oh, bummer. Okay, is um, it at least pretty? Yeah, it kind of it, you know it echoes the style that he's going for now. His stuff was a lot more pillowy. It's less traditional than it is now. It's like he's really honed in on like just hot, super high production value anime aesthetics, but back then. His character designs were a little wonky still, hmm. uh, like kind of rounder faces and uh, shit like that. Huh. Um, but um, yeah, his, but he, he has stuff that I've really enjoyed. Like I, I really love uh, five centimeters per second. Mm-hmm. And I found that uh, that uh, gosh, what was the other one? Um, Children who chase lost voices. No, no. Uh, Oh, you, Garden of Words. Garden of Words. I found it at least interesting uh, in that it was a non-traditional romance story, which I kind of liked. Um, but yeah, most of his romance is pretty, pretty straightforward. Yeah. Um, but that, yeah, that like one. He... What about that one? It was just a little mm-hmm. bit more mature, um, literally, because oh. the characters are a little older uh, and their their struggles are a little bit more significant and not so contrived i suppose mm-hmm. like they, they, you, they're more realistic in that way anyway uh yeah i feel like he makes movies 
just to have um he makes them to for moments he doesn't like they don't make they're not the most cohesive they don't make a ton of sense if you consider them all at once this movie has like five or six song drops in it where where they where they drop a j-pop song in there well yeah and it's all because it's like his movies have i don't i think it's like a it's one of those things where it's like a band that's just for his movies but Mm -hmm. his movies have rad wimp songs and um I don't remember. I know I've only, like I said, I only saw your name, but that has the. I think it just has the one Radwimp song. I could be wrong. <laughs> and in this one, it's like three. <laughs> they just keep coming. Yeah, no, it's, it's like, constant. It's like, oh, here's another. I mean, there's only two, but it's like, hey, here's Rad. You know, you like this. And uh, I mean, that's not even the worst defender when it comes to like, hey, I'm. It's it's one of these. Uh, but it's, um, Tanky Noko. It's about. Um, it's about a girl who. It's about weather. It's I don't. I'm, I'm not. I, it's about a. It's about a boy and a girl. It's a. It's a. It's a movie where a boy and a girl refuse to touch each other for ninety minutes, like all the rest of his. Oh, this one's on. But when stuff. they do, oh boy. They don't. When, I mean, when they, they, when they make any kind of physical contact. Yeah, it has, it I feel, has to be I for, eight thousand feet in the air. I forget who it was. It was some other director who, who was talking about Shinkai, and he was just saying <laughs> like, you know, I like his movies, but God damn, can they at least hold hands or something? <laughs> can, mm-hmm, they just, mm-hmm. can they do a- anything? Like, it's just like, it's, it's kind of weird at some point. That's you funny. Know? You got to do something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so many movies. Uh, yeah. He's very, he's, um, he's very, very sentimental. Uh, very, uh, uh, I, I would describe his movies as like the anime equivalent of explosions in the sky or something like just crescendo yeah. core filmmaking. <laughs> where it's, where it's, it's about it's about like a, just it's like okay slow slow build up and then it's like okay everything's at eleven you you're feeling stuff now viewer and I'm yes like, there's maybe. a the big here's a here's a wallpaper big swelling sound check there you go yeah yeah and it's like the most staggeringly beautiful modern animation and uh you forget for that brief moment you forget that you've just been sitting in your seat like mouth kind of open a little bit breathing through your mouth eyes a little glazed over mm-hmm. and then and you're like yeah this is this is why i watch makoto shinkai baby anyway we should probably cover what the movie actually is <laughs> um it's uh it's uh, i went so i went into it I um like most movies I knew I knew that I, people didn't like the ending because all I heard was that people were like what the f- he's um he sacrifices millions of lives for his for his waifu and I was like actually that's fi- I'm fine with that that's good but I bet they still don't even hold hands and I I think I was right there <clears throat> um but it's this girl uh she gets weather powers from praying on a, on a roof when her, when her mom's dying in the rain and she wants us to stop raining. And then she becomes this thing that I guess is a, is a thing in Japan. It's called a, a, a sunshine girl, which is, she can make the, uh, make the rain, make it go away. Do you ever think that Japan just comes up with these fake ass pieces of culture to fuck with us Westerners? <laughs> They're like, check this out. I could, I bet I could convince these fucking Baka foreigners that, uh, that, that there's some such a thing as a sunshine girl. But they don't really think it's real. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know, but like they're like, I'm just gonna see. I'm gonna keep making shit up and see if yeah. I can convince them that this is actually part of our culture. And Koreans meanwhile, are, Koreans are laughing at us because of fan death. Yep, yep. I hope so. Um, there's a lot of cityscapes, and um, one of my notes is just I like her boots, and then below that is five years of podcasting. <laughs> this, is, this is my level of of analysis. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of narration. I don't know if I needed the the narration. I feel like I could tell what was going on. Oh, is it is it the protagonist is is yeah. like yeah he's like the the girl I saw her and and it was everything changed and then music card music drop. That yeah, kind of shit. And yeah. He, like it's him explaining what was happening to her, which doesn't make any sense because he wasn't there. Right. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, he he uh, he gets he's going to Tokyo on a on a boat. And there's this uh, this this downburst, which is a real thing, 
and uh, he gets saved by this sleazeball guy and uh he gets to tokyo and he's trying he's a runaway and he's trying to get a job and um he stays at like manga cafes or computer cafe whatever they're called and um it's it's so funny that like tokyo in this is is played as this rough and tumble dog eat dog <laughs> yeah, town yeah. That was that's awkward. He, like people maybe it works people over own there. guns. There, well, there's, there's, there's that's gun. okay. So we have to. <laughs> there's a gun in this movie. No, no, okay, so the, <laughs> by far, by far the wildest part of this fucking movie, and the thing that is yes, so <laughs> so tonally thank you wrong. <laughs> yes, thank you so much. Every way it's it stands out like a sore thumb it's beyond ridiculous. everything else. It's like. <laughs> I kept watching this movie like I can't believe this. He just has a gun. <laughs> he has a gun and he points at somebody. He points <laughs> a gun. This this stupid ass fucking just like young YA romance story has the protagonist pointing a gun at a police officer. Yeah, there's like a funny montage of him trying to be a host at like a club. <clears throat> and um he gets a you know a big Mac and then it's just like, yo, I found a fucking gun. I stra- strapped up. Because like it's in, not a movie about violence at all. There's no, nothing about no, like he doesn't no. turn dark. There's he, like there's no. It, it's so out of place. <laughs> completely. Well, it, to me, it just seems like they. It, it it just shows like a cultural lack of knowledge of what guns are or something. Just like it's it, and not to just like make a huge generalization, but can you imagine? Like, because you couldn't get away with this in like a Western show, it would it would be explicitly like it have so much more gravity to it. But the fact that this guy's just lugging around and bandying around a gun is treated with no significance. It's absurd. I mean, when he brings it out, it's very significant. But it's like it it, it just shows up a couple times throughout the movie, and it's like, yo, no one's been talking about this gun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, why does he There's have he- it? What? It's so. It's so weird. Well, he's working with the, he was working as a journalist or working with this sleazy kind of like uh, uh, Esquire, not Esquire, um, um, Inquirer type magazine, right? Like, isn't that what he's doing? And but that, uh, that's after he gets the gun. Okay, so he gets the gun at first from from where? He gets it out of a garbage he find, bin. He accidentally knocks over a garbage bin, and yeah, like they set it up briefly that there was a shipment of guns that like got you know. Um, distributed like they didn't catch it in time and the, you know the authorities are looking for it so he finds one that's been packaged up ready to go why would but you, it's, why does he keep the gun uh because he thinks people are going to see it and like maybe suspect him and he thinks it's a toy so he just grabs it and runs mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um yeah i just the, the only thing when, when i look through through my mind's eye like because i watched this movie on a date like fucking like three or four months ago or something probably longer mm-hmm. than that at this point yeah, the, the, but in my mind's eye, the entire plot synopsis of this movie is a gun. <laughs> <What's your point>? <laughs> <laughs> That's it. If I remember whether with you is people fall from the sky, gun. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's it shows up twice, and it's and it's so and the the second time he he pulls it out like he's not he doesn't have like a backpack or a bag anymore. He's wearing like a t shirt and jeans. He has nowhere to put it, and he's been arrested like twice. And he falls, and the gun is next to the ground on him, like ne- yes. on on the ground next to him in this building that he's never been in before. It's just, it's it's just next to, and it's it, it, it it's makes you so feel crazy. It makes you feel insane. I have yes. like I, when, when I'm watching the movie, I'm like, wait, like, wait, yeah, what? is the gun is the gun not real? Like, what is? Well, because it doesn't. It's not like a plot component that plays no, in in a meaningful absolute, way. Yes, it's an absolute like when he has to. Uh, keep people there's the two times he has to keep people away from him or scare them in the movie and we couldn't find any other way to do it even though there's magic so we had to give him a gun yeah and like that's what i was saying earlier when i was like saying like it doesn't have significance it's just not relevant to the narrative at play (laughs) i mean not much is relevant to the narrative but yeah a gun is the most out of place thing you could have in the movie like it would be as weird if, if someone like got raped you know yeah yeah and 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 the thing is is that like the stuff in the there's stuff in this movie that i like a lot and i think works pretty well like i like him working at this sleazy fucking newspaper i think it's fun i sure. think it's fun that this he's like kind of like a street rat kid because it's not necessarily something you see in a protagonist a lot in anime i feel um 
And uh, like that stuff's interesting, but it's completely overshadowed by the presence of this fucking gun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a uh, it's a baffling decision to say the least. And there's like again, there's other stuff in it. Like there are fun characters. He's got that kind of uh, playful sort of um, uh, the the uh, uh, the fucking secretary of the guy he works for. Yeah, he he may or may not his, her his his mistress. Yeah, and. Uh, like that, the, that's a fun character, and, and like right. I could see the stuff working well. The best character is the girl's little brother, the ladies' man. Oh yeah, 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 for sure. He well, cause, cause he, cause like he 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 enlists the help. So at one point, the protagonist gets arrested, um, and he the the ladies' man uh, of the 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 girl's brother. Yeah, the he's girl's also being brother. held because they live alone and they're being returned to their parents. But he's kept in this like child care place with cops. Uh, he enlists the help of a number of different girls to to fucking distract or something. Yeah, oh, two, oh, wait. two girls and one of them is his ex, who she, but she still comes and switches places with him because he's very androgynous looking. That's great. Uh, it's a great <laughs> bit. Yeah, I yeah, mean, it's yeah. Awesome. And, and he's uh, always with a different girl and like swapping them out. You know, the first time they, uh, like the protag sees him, he's on a bus and he's with a girl and then she gets yes. off and at the yes. same stop, another one gets on and immediately sits down next to him. It's a great, it's a goes, great visual gag as well. Like it, it just plays beautifully and like it's, it's a, a great little bit of comedy, but, um, <laughs> gun. And that, and that, and that's, yeah, <laughs> weathering with gun. Uh, and it's the, yeah, seeing that kid is part of the protagonist's like, he says something like, geez, Tokyo's hardcore. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's great. <laughs> Children of multiple girlfriends. Yeah, that's a great, great bits with that, with that character. Yeah. He's, but, giving but he's, him, he's giving him woman advice at some point. Like, he's like 10, and it's actually like good advice, you know? It, seems like, it seems like a number of, con- like, it's like they smash three different screenplays together. It's like they have like this, this kind of uh, street rat kid story. Where he's like, you know, living in Tokyo and it's a harder place, which is fine. You can make Tokyo harder than it actually is. It's great. Uh, and then they have this actual crime story out of nowhere where he's got a gun. And then they have this romantic drama thing going on, like a kind of your name style rom com or romantic drama film. You know? Yeah, I almost wonder if he was like, if it was like studio involvement or something. It's yeah. like, okay, you have to make it 80% like your name. And he's like, okay, but I want to make it. Uh... Uh, how do how do call this? But but the um, thing is, I want to give like, it a bit of an edge, but not really. It, it seems like it works. There were like maybe there were four scenes with a fucking gun, and they cut two of them, and now it's like, oh, we still have this gun in here. I guess we can't really get rid of it. We don't have time to redraw these scenes. <laughs> you know, it it's, 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 it, it uh, seems like it worked. I mean, it, it made money, and it, and it well, won yeah. a bunch of awards and shit. And it's like, I I, I uh. It's just a baffling watch. I, uh, I and again, like it looks so good too. It's beautiful. It looks great. Yeah. Um. But like, yeah, like I said, there's very little coherence, like narratively and and thematically. Like it's like sort of about, you know, about how um, about uh about how things um are always changing. And also, like family sort, but not really. Bro, yeah, no, it's it's. Come on, uh, I don't. Yeah, there's no, there's nothing to grasp onto. It's like it's just a bunch of stuff happening. I don't. Um, it's there. Yeah, I. I you know how it, sometimes there are like identical twins, and yet still they look a little bit different. You know, like they're like genetically sure. identical, but environmental factors make one of them look a little bit worse. This mm-hmm. is this is your name's coked up or like methed out brother, like twin brother for sure. Mm-hmm. Because it's like again, they, they look on the surface level. Like if you look at screenshots for this movie, it's like, damn, that's a high quality Japanimation right there. It looks great, but it, there's so much going on that makes it really hard to to appreciate. I'd say I don't this know. Is, this is the Rick Wilson, uh, <laughs> yes, or um, uh. <laughs> Uh, um, uh, McCarthy. Who's Macaulay Culkin's brother? Oh, Kieran Culkin. Kieran Culkin. But they, but they ended up both looking fucked up. I think I'm not sure. Uh, maybe Mac- yeah. Macaulay is looking better as of late, though. Um, but uh, yeah, just just um, 
And then he has like the obligatory, like they have to be apart for a while before they see each other again at the end, you know? Yeah. So that they can have this super dramatic, they fall, which the sequence is awesome where, where they have this, uh, they're, they're falling from this rain cloud in the sky or something. That's before the, 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 they don't see, no, the end is very anticlimactic where he sees her just on this hill and then they run toward each other. And that's the end of the, Oh, okay. Because it's like one tenth or whatever. It's like one tenth the emotional impact of your name because like he's just been at school for three years and then they just see each other and and that's it. So it's the same ending, but but not as good. Um, uh, it's uh, yeah. Uh, other characters are like I like the whore. Yep, she's friendly. Yeah, she's great. <clears throat> um, so uh, you know what happens in this movie? You know, like he's he's working for this sleaze guy for Matt, writing for like a you know, like a urban legends magazine or whatever. And then he recognizes this girl that he saw in a McDonald's like months ago, it seems like. So I don't know. She, left to to, she must be really, really, really pretty. Copyrighted audio or video. Come on, man. Give me a break. We already got nails for, for we got oh. nails for, I don't know. For Jeff, what. you coming after us? There's Jeff? no way it was for Jeff. No, people, people just fucking with us. I'm being fucked with. Oh my God. They're coming down. They don't like to hear the truth about weathering with you. Yeah, they well, want to live well, in this little bubble. I'm gonna give it a few minutes because every time this happens, the second one I make also gets taken out immediately, and then the third one works. Maybe if I just wait a while. This is uh, this is our. Uh, we're gonna get canceled before Sam Harris does. Mm-hmm. Do you know about any of that stuff going on? I don't know. Hasn't he been like? He's not really in a position to. What's he gonna be canceled from podcasting? Oh, I, he he just had a podcast where he was. Uh, he had some opinions on fucking all of the shit that's going on. I'm just trying to make us seem a little bit more dangerous than we actually are. <laughs> uh, anyway. You're, um, trying, you're trying to make us hardcore by referencing Sam Harris. Dude, he's, dude, he's part of the intellectual deep web, bro, or dark web, whatever it is. <laughs> intellectual deep web. Oh, uh, uh, fuck. Uh, I'm over here making a- references to the CCRU, and you're like, um... Well, Sam Harris is in some hot water. I, uh, I, this movie got me laid. Oh, sick. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see, we'll now see. that we're not on stream, we can get, we can, yeah, we can, uh, get raunchy after hours. Yeah. Mm-hmm. After dark. Uh, this, yeah. If you're hearing this on a podcast, this is exclusive. Uh, but yeah, no, um, this, this movie got me laid. Took a girl to see the movie, then we boned. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> Bone. <laughs> <clears throat> Uh, yeah, uh, I, I was just I, I was really hoping that you would have had to wait a way to watch this like earlier this year. But I'm, I'm glad we finally got to talk about it because mm-hmm. I've been sitting on this because I really haven't talked about it at all. I think I gave you like a brief impression or something. But um, yeah, gun, <laughs> gun, man. It's crazy. I'm trying shit. to figure out what uh, what the gun is. And um... I'm going to post about it on K. Let's find out. It's probably just like, I mean, it's probably not like a real, but it's probably based on something. But I can't, it just looks, it doesn't look like a real gun. I don't know. It's weirdly tapered. I don't, I don't know. I'm trying, to, trying to find this image here. Oh, here we go. Uh, it looks like a Beretta or something. It's not a, nah. Well. Our, our Makarov. Some sort of Soviet could be based on, gun. Could be like a like a really fucked up M9 or something. Oh no, it is a macro. That's totally oh, it. Damn, I'm good. That's absolutely what it is. 100. Let's go. Um, okay. Nailed. Is that Russian or something? So yes. Okay. Your pants getting some old fucking guns. That's the best they can do, man. I was almost gonna buy one of these things. It shoots a nine by eighteen Makarov. What the? Where the fuck are they gonna get that in Japan? <laughs> That's part. That's on the shipment, dude. That's on the same truck. They brought in the guns and then the yeah. ammo. Um, or, or 380 auto. Uh, I'm trying to think about what else there is to talk about here. We haven't really talked about notes. the girl much because she's not much of a character necessarily. Yeah, so, I mean, she's um, she she's an object. She, yeah, she she's magic, cute girl. I don't know. Um, yeah, there's and then they don't like. There's like this whole mythos about the sky and there's this like ecosystem in the sky and they don't really get into that at all that's not addressed at all either you know there's like this like everything that happens in your name 
isn't explained, which is fine because it's like about fate. And it's just like it's a we- this is a weird thing that happens because it's because it's because it's magic. Um, because you know, uh, it seems like you get fifty percent of all of the storylines in this movie. Yeah, it's like they explain it a little bit, but then once you explain a little bit, you got to do a little bit more than that because it's like okay, there's weird like water dragons up in the clouds, but you see them like once and they don't do anything. So I don't know why. And they explain what what sunshine girl what happens to them and that they have to sacrifice themselves and that they can change the weather but all this stuff about the sky and how there's stuff growing in it at one point it rains jellyfish it's like oh yeah yeah what i don't um i forgot about all that shit honestly yeah um so uh yeah and they they meet because he saves her from these club pimps by almost shooting one um and um there's a scene where she cooks. I like that one a lot. Uh, um, Boss Hunk is her brother. Yep. Uh, oh, and then the dude from Your Name shows up. And it's like, ah, uh, oh, are you there? I'm here. I'm here. Okay. I'm just trying to remember. If I, I don't recall this. You didn't notice that both the characters from Your Name showed up in the movie? No, I, I, I think I did. I was just overwhelmed by gun. <laughs> you weren't thinking about the gun the whole time. I was thinking about the gun literally the whole time. It was the only thing Ow. I was thinking about. Why was that what you were thinking about? You you don't understand. It hijacked my mental processes. It's like gone for an hour and a half of the movie. I was waiting for it to come back. Check off's gun, bro. I'm like He's not going to pull the gun on the fucking bitch from your name in the jewelry store. He might have thought that would have been sick. That would have been <laughs> She would have been Liddy. Yeah, no, I okay. Yeah, I've got I've got an image of it here. It's like yes, yes, I I do recall now. But again, it's been like four or five months. Mm-hmm. Um, and a cameo doesn't necessarily stick with me to that degree. Two very he they have him step out of a shadow. It's so fucking. It's so weird. But then I mentioned I got laid. <laughs> Okay, but you weren't, that wasn't distracting you. you. That happened afterwards, I'm assuming. You don't understand how my game works. <laughs> <laughs> Dick through the popcorn bucket. It burns because they put the new oil, they put the hot butter on there. <laughs> it's really, people, people propose that as a method. Of, in. And it's like, what is she going to do when actually she gets there? She's going to give you a hand job on the popcorn? Yes. That's, that's gross. Because she's going to be like, well, my hand's already here. Yeah. I guess I'm thought committed. Yeah. I don't think um, butter would make very good lubricant. Yes, it totally would. Well, I don't know, it's probably hopefully it's good. unsalted. Yeah, but you'll be fine. Um, yeah, like a like just a few scenes apart, both characters from from your name show up. Very, just kind of embarrassing, especially when the movie's like not great already. <clears throat> it's like, yeah. wow, you're just. Just doing that, huh? Um, I wonder if characters did characters from like five centimeters per second show up in your name? No, or anything like that? No, you don't think he's has he had other cameos? No, I would, I would, I would have noticed that. Um, and it would have been totally inappropriate because of the, tone, <laughs> the, the, the tonal difference. Of I don't know if he cares about that, man. Easter eggs, Kimi no Nawa. Okay, let's see. There are some references to Garden of Words in Kimi no Nawa. The female protagonist of Garden with Words makes a cameo in your name as Itamori High School's Japanese literature teacher. Okay. So I, I spent most of your name looking, or of uh, Garden of Words looking at her looking feet. At feet, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, so I don't really. Uh, is she, is it established that she's a teacher in that movie? She is a teacher. Okay. Did she wonder if she had to change schools at the end of what happened in no, no. Garden of Words? <laughs> I don't like the implication there. Um, the Italian restaurant that Taki worked at is named Il Guardia Dello Parole. Oh, come on. Parole. Um, that's the Italian translation of the title of the movie. Makato Shinkai claims that this Easter egg wasn't added by him, but by one of the environment artists. He claims... Yeah, I, I can claim a lot of things. Takao Akizuki, the male protagonist in Garden of Words, made a very brief cameo near the end of the film. Um, this Easter egg was revealed by Makoto Shinkai himself on January 3rd, 2018. Oh, no, I'm, I'm above having things like the, the names of restaurants reference my previous films, but characters, that's my shit. 
just explicitly putting characters from other works in here. What are and they now, doing? What are they doing? In, in he's that? like, okay, it's been two years and no one noticed. Guys, you see, I put the guy from the other movie in this movie. Ah. Um, in Makoto Shinkai's novel version of The Garden of Words, I guess he did he write that? <laughs> there was a pair of friends named Saya and Teshigaware. It appears that Makoto Shinkai reused the names in this movie. Huh. Um, yeah, so uh, uh, Weathering with You. Um, there's a speech by an old man about Sunshine Girls. He talks about recorded history being the last hundred years. I don't think that's what recorded history is, but that's it's fine. The um one of the, the the cop that's following the boy around this whole movie, he has a pompadour. Yes. Uh that's pretty funny. I that's another thing that makes no sense is like the whole city's fucking underwater at one point, and they have like eight patrol cars following this runaway, like 17-year-old, 16-year-old guy. And it's like, would anyone care about this if there's a fucking there's six inches of of rainwater in all of Tokyo. Japan has never seen a gun before. I'm sure they <laughs> they didn't take the gun away from them. They didn't care. So it's like, wait, I don't know. Um, and uh, so he uh, they stay this uh, hotel gas. They stay at a ho- they they all they all run away. Cops are onto them. There's a there's a, another cityscape in one of the hotels. It's called Hotel Gas. Um. And then, uh, and then she that's, at that point she disappears because uh, she did too much weather. At least they hugged. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. They, they hugged. I thought I was wondering if there was like a, a finger touch while they were both in bed because the brother was there in the hotel with them. The brother was asleep. They do hug. Okay. Um, and then it goes. So it's been raining the whole time because she hasn't left. And now that she's gone, um, it immediately turns from rainy season to Steins Gate. We are Ste- Steins Gate is the hottest, brightest show of all time. Okay. Uh, the whole the whole show looks like that. This scene in this movie where it's just fucking suddenly, insanely summertime mm-hmm. um, in 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 fucking in Tokyo. Um, and um, and st- also a weird um, like plot reveal that they didn't really need. He finds out that instead of being eighteen, she was fifteen. <laughs> Oh, um, that's right. Yeah, I put a bunch of Lenny faces in my in my notes. I is there, she, I don't. I guess that's supposed to upset him more because he was actually supposed to be the one in charge, but he didn't realize it. Yeah, yeah. Um, the cop still has this fucking huge pomp. Um, and then so yeah, and then the the whore decides just to become a fugitive with him, but I don't know why. Like. She doesn't. She doesn't have this moment where she realizes that the the sunshine girl stuff is real. So there's really no reason for her to like be helping him and and endangering herself and like going on this high speed chase with the police. We get we get fifty percent of every storyline. Like she I just said. decides to yeah. Yeah, we, we missed that. They got to trim it. The movie was four hours long, and they're like, oh, we need this bitch to be about a buck thirty. And it's also well, no, it's it's fucking. Um, it's a hundred. It's uh, almost two hours. Oh, is it really? I thought it was like I thought it was under a hundred. It's minutes. an hour fifty-two. Oh my yeah. god! Yeah. Um, to its credit, it doesn't really feel that long. I guess. Um, hundred and twenty. Yeah. No. Okay. Yeah. Near and near. then it seems like like I thought they had run him far away, but then he gets arrested, and immediately that lady's just there. So I guess he didn't even make it to another city. Um. And then he runs like he he very, he jogs on the train tracks for a while, and everyone's like stopping and looking at him, even though he's not running that fast. And they're like, "Oh my god, look at that kid running!" <laughs> that's, a, that's a weird scene. Um, they did turn the little brother's androgyny into a plot point, like we said. That was good. All the good stuff was with him. Um, oh, and also like his plan is to go to the rooftop shrine where he got her powers. What? Why? Why does he think that will help? What is he uh, do? Uh, 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 bro, let's talk to Makoto. Let's get him on here. Yeah, we should have invited him. But we'll, we'll make sure he gets on the next episode. Promise, ne- next episode we will mm-hmm. have Makoto Shinkai. And uh, I know he's probably busy working on the, the third Your Name movie. <laughs> um, and uh, But maybe we'll be able to get some pointers as well. But actually, I think Makoto needs to come to us and we can, we can have a translator... 
explain to him exactly what he needs to fix. His next movie is about two space pilots drifting apart in the cosmos, oh, but, one of them has, but one of them has a gun. <laughs> 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 Uh, <laughs> and they just uh, what they just it, he just keeps shooting at her and the bullets keep reaching her but 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 they keep getting farther and farther uh, apart oh my she God. has to wait longer and longer between the bullets <laughs> Damn. he's writing uh, the messages on the bullets and then uh-huh. but then there's like a huge fucking rad wimp song that explodes as the is she reads the final well, bullet. It's, it's she yeah she gets like her last bullet for 10,000 years before she goes into cryo sleep and it's supposed to have his name on it but it says I love you on the bullet and then the Brad Wimps <laughs> song kicks on <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh uh, and this is where I lose my mind because he falls down and the cops are resting and then the gun is just there next to his head and it's fucking wild um, and then uh, yeah he goes up into the sky with her and I guess she was just laying in like a sky field yes. that whole time um, remember in your name when he goes on that crazy fucking girl spit induced psychedelic trip yeah. through Japanese uh, mythological? Did we find uh, out if we can buy that imagery? stuff? Did we find out what? Did we find out if we were able to buy any of this because oh, David was buy David. Miko buy Miko uh, uh, <laughs> chew. I think David was looking into one at one point. Miko meal. He, yeah. Um, and then he, he brings it back and, um, let's see. Uh, and he, <clears throat> and he tells her that, uh, that he doesn't, uh, he doesn't care about the weather cause he wants, he wants her back. This is, this movie is just a, this is a metaphor for, for me and my love of gasoline. Oh. And cause it, the gasoline, cause once you start huffing it enough, it starts talking to you, and it, it's it's usually <laughs> like, but if you keep doing this, the planet will. And I'm like, I don't care. I love you. I remember this. I remember this dude had an anecdote about huffing gasoline in the military. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna, we're gonna yeah, military something base. over there. Yeah, we're gonna on a military base, and, and he's just. They, they was in charge of the gasoline. He figured out he'd get high from it. <laughs> in charge of the gasoline. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he was just huffing gas all day. Oh brain my cell. god, all day. You don't have to worry about brain cells that grow back. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> was he was he like slow? No, <laughs> no. Uh, the fuck? Been, Everything they taught me is a lie. Might have been fucking around. Uh, but Man, uh, I mean, he was probably just like enjoying the smell. He wasn't actually like you have to if you want to huff it. Like you have to fucking. Really huff. Well, you're, you know? you're just asphyxiating yourself, right? Like, isn't that yeah, what's happening? You're there? only breathing gas, and yeah, it's not like just the fumes. Yourself. You're like putting gas in a container, and then only breathing what's in there. Um, and then like you just fucking it just destroys your nervous system. Um, uh, did you know that? Speaking of the military, did you know that that the U.S. just has anime missiles now that shoot swords? What? Have you seen anything about this? There's something, I swear to God, there's something called the Hellfire Sword Blade. <laughs> oh, and it shoots a payload. It's a, it shoots a payload that's just a bunch of swords that fly down into a car and slice it open like a fucking tin can and and and, and uh, cut and just uh, destroy everyone inside with blades. Why? You can look at pictures, it's just like... Bullets are pretty good for those things like that. You can't shoot bullets out of a, out of a drone. Hellfire sword blade. Yeah, if you look up, you can look up. You can see the cars are just sliced open yeah, like a yeah. like a sushi or a, like a like a sardine can. I, uh, that's not, it's. This is rad, but we really <laughs> need is uh, is we need to get swords back into like the hands of the on the ground troops. Yeah, we need the we need the UAVs to walk and and carry the swords. <laughs> yeah, hold on, because. If they're making missiles with swords, we're really not that far. We're pretty close to getting to. We're pretty close to getting remotely, like autonomously controlled I, robots. Yeah, I feel like fighters. we already have like the superior weaponry. We, we, you know, we have bigger budgets. We, we have the advantage. We could at least have. We could at least have a little showmanship. Okay, we can take. Yeah. It, we can bring it back a bit. We don't have to have the best stuff. We just have to stay ahead. <laughs> but 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 as long as we stay ahead, we can have fun, right? Like yeah, let's just make something that three legs. Yeah, because like yeah. It, because you know, like brutal efficiency has its own merits, but there's something about demoralizing the enemy forces. Those of force are, are yeah, very yeah. undervalued. Absolutely, For sure. that's that's psychological warfare. It's fine. If you're like a member of ISIS, 
and you're like you're getting ready to fire an RPG, and you see on the distant horizon the sh- the, the the fucking shadowy figure that's like thirty feet tall and, and wielding a giant cleaver. You're running yeah. the opposite fucking direction for sure. Yeah, the fucking big uh, rusty machete from Dark Souls. Like, yeah, oh. if I'm driving, if I'm an ISIS, and I just know that at any point, like, I could get instantly sliced by a missile blade and not feel anything and just i'll be like okay whatever but yeah, if yeah. i know there's a fucking robot walking around somewhere with yeah. a sword i'm like i'm done i'm and i'm then, being a, i'm gonna be a farmer i'm gonna go herder herder from now on let, let some people paint that fucker up you, if you want you can have somebody doing like an edgy skull thing on the face or yellow and black can, Ooh, yeah do like a more traditional like gundam style design where it's very uh elegant and it's and it's design but regardless giant robot scary it's just gonna be the thing from um from uh metal wolf Ca- chaos what's it yeah, called chaos, that's it <laughs> yeah yeah i just picked three random words hoping it was a japanese no, that's game exactly, that's exactly what it is okay um so uh yeah at the end of this movie so yeah that's he brings it back president in that game whoa say again he plays the president in metal wolf chaos yeah you're the president in a robot okay. yeah yeah, yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. um I should play that. That came that that's a remaster on PC, I believe. Yeah. It seems fun. Um and he brings it back, but he has to go home um to his parents. That's another thing. Like you said, we don't get we don't really he may, I don't even think he mentions really why he wanted to leave home. Bad uh, bad dad, I think, or something. Bad dad. <laughs> <laughs> uh but yeah, he has to finish off high school. Uh goes back. Um has a talk with some people about the consequences of the choice that he made. Tokyo's, you know, mostly underwater. Um, he talks to um, a, an old lady with a dead husband that they did a sunshine job for. Mm-hmm. And she's like, hey, it's fine. Um, Fuck him. Fuck him, I say. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, it's, the, it's the closest thing we get to, to like, a, like, a, like a theme. Where um, it's kind of like Girls Last Tour, where it's she talks about how, uh, like it, you know, it used to be underwater, so really it's just going back to the way it was. So it's kind of like, um, you know, you don't have to. It's not you don't have to. Don't worry about shit. It's not your responsibility to save ever, save the whole fucking universe, um, but, but, which is but, nice because you don't get that over here. Like, yeah, it definitely is going back to the way it was. But it didn't have to be that way. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, it's, it's like, but he wanted, but I, but he wanted to get his his dick sucked. It's, so it's, it's fine. It's like it's like, uh, it's like somebody makes like a, a sandcastle on the beach, and you go and kick it in because it's like that's the way that it was going to be again. It was it was this way, and it'll be this way once more. It's like motherfucker, we built all this. You, we built all this. This is but he, yeah, but he didn't make the uh, he didn't make the flood or the that whole system. So it's, it's not his fucking problem. Oh, okay, that's true. That's true. That's true. He just could have stopped it. Anyway, yeah. Well, you know, like you know, yeah. yeah it's, it's a it's a but train. Like, I'm not gonna a train problem. You know, it's <laughs> like you sacrifice one one anime titty lady for millions of people. I probably wouldn't. Wow! Fuck off. You, uh, no, I'm saying no, no, no. I'm saying I'm not sacrificing this lady. I'm I'm going for her, man. Oh, okay. I yeah, you no, 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 yeah, yeah, no, no. Thank fuck you. those people. Fuck those people. Fuck, fuck, fuck these Japs. This is this might be my favorite frame of the movie. Look at this fucking, look at this fucking kid with his big old with his corn dog and his tiny shorts. <laughs> I lost my lost the fucking. Uh, Close the screen. Oh. oh, it's gone. Um, yeah, whatever. Uh, and then he talks. He talks to Slee's guy again. There's, there was a cat that he called uh, Ame, which means rain, and uh, it's fat now. And uh, I've one of my notes is the drama levels on these wimps lead-ins are reaching critical mass. Yeah, very, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. very dramatic. Um, yeah, so they have the couple meet again after a long but not unreasonable time. Again, and uh, yeah, and then they and they they see each other, and then, yeah, it's like yeah. Hmm. See, yeah, if if Shinkai thought that your name was messy, I don't know what the fuck he thought about this one. Uh, maybe your name, he was like, ah, I don't know, it was not that good, yeah, you because know, everyone was going nuts. Maybe he's just going for like an abstract piece at a certain point. 
<laughs> he's, he's just like, I want to see if I can just put different scenes on the screen without any context whatsoever and see if people will swallow that shit down. He's mm. almost like it's almost like a Zack Snyder type. Where Zack Snyder is very much about like, I'm gonna compile a bunch of scenes and a bunch of lines that stand out like very dramatically in the film. You'll and see. Then, You'll all see. Connective tissue is uh, less important. Yeah, I feel like this was not thought through very well. Uh, oh, I um, this is one of my. We were, oh yeah, we were talking about this earlier. We we're joking about this, but I, I peeked at the uh, the RogerEbert.com review of this movie. Oh, there was one. Yeah, and one of the first um, sentences is, "I can see why some animation fans revere writer director Makoto Shinkai." Saw five centimeters per second. Garden of Words as the next big thing in Japanese animation. The next big uh, thing, uh, highest grossing all yeah. time. <laughs> Someone mm. wrote that. Oh, you weird know, film. I, I think this James Cameron guy might make it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yes, it is a weird movie. Uh, I, I don't even. I wouldn't even say mm. I dislike it. And if people ask me if I should watch it, I'd be like, Yeah, yeah, yeah I mean, it's, it's, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Did it's you pretty... like your name? We watched your name before this, for God's sake. Yes, that's exactly what I was. What I would say is like, make sure you watch your name, and watch if name. if you want something that is like the bastard twin of that, go for it, man. Like, just you. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't dissuade people from watching it necessarily. Yeah, if you want the, if you want the the under the sofa coke after the rad party last night of <laughs> movies, you can this watch is, this. this. Is Mario. No, this is the Waluigi. <laughs> this is pure chaos. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it is a Wario. Anyway, at least you move on. Yeah. Um, who? What a what a film. Um, and then I watched uh, Princess Mononoke. Yes. Which is by a filmmaker named Hayao Miyazaki. A young up and comer. I get, well, I guess he's a famed. He's a, you know he's the famous director's father I guess the uh, tales of Earth from Earth Goro <laughs> Goro Miyazaki uh, never stop taking shit poor Goro uh, he'll has he made anything since Earthsea uh, would you be able to uh, but but is, is, is <laughs> the Earthsea... first the first YouTube results when you search for Goro Miyazaki is the video Hayao Miyazaki reacts to the first movie of his son Goro and it's five minutes long and I bet I know how that goes but like how bad could it really be it's probably just boring oh he directed from up on Poppy Hill which is actually pretty entertaining uh I like that one quite a bit so he's didn't his dad help him on that one though I think it was a script I think it was a Hayao Miyazaki script now that you Ah. mentioned it uh Anyway. Screenplay, screenplay by Hayao Miyazaki. Yeah, yeah, yep. Okay. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. okay. All right. Uh, yeah, well, you know who fucking Hayao Miyazaki is. I don't. Who is he? Uh, he's, he's yeah. God, in... Tales from Earthsea is two fucking hours. Probably Oof. looks for it good though. Yeah. Uh, sure. Uh, yeah, it's just what the, one of the most important and revered animation directors in the history of cinema. He hates zombies. He hates anime. He thinks it's a mistake. <laughs> Iconically, hates hates anime. It's a he mistake. does not. That's that's a that's slander. Yeah, yeah. Not true. Okay. He good. loves it. He loves the stuff. Can't get enough of it. Yeah, he's like, bring, bring me big and big titty anime bitches, please. <laughs> <laughs> Miyazaki going into his secret room in the studio and it's full of dakimakuras and yeah, fucking. Yeah. Gochiusa posters course, and uh, and Miku Super, figures. Supersonico and fucking just like <laughs> <laughs> Supersonico mouse pads and uh, yeah, uh, come come figurines. Mm-hmm. You know. All right, um, he's eating he's eating big um, titty shaped pieces <laughs> of bread. He's 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 got he's got a website where he does. He does reviews of Ona Holes. <laughs> he just puts the cat ears on his head and gets on his uh, on his big pink, you know, um, uh, K on laptop. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> hmm. uh, this movie's from 1997, which I didn't know. I thought it was the 80s because of the way it is. But I yes. guess it's it's Miyazaki, so um, it's very. It's very 90s in a way that I can't really 
describe like it's, it's i guess it just reminds me of, like disney stuff i'm gonna imagine you watched the the sub yeah, yeah. but uh, i did i accidentally watched like five seconds of the dub and it it starts out with his narration that's where it's a guy's voice that that's like every voice from the 90s yeah, it's yeah. like it's, it's it's a trailer it's guy talk about princess Mono- <laughs> yeah mm-hmm. in ancient times and it's i can't do it but it's uh it's I because you always think that that's the same guy, but it turns out a bunch of guys are just doing that voice because that's Billy Crudup. I looked it up. Yeah, yeah. Billy Crudup. <laughs> he was uh, he was the mustache guy from Almost Famous. Um, but anyways, uh, also there's no narration in the Japanese. They just added it for, for fucking stupid Americans. Yeah, but well, they got, they got there's... some mini driver in there. What is it? uh-huh. it's, like, it's like it's like oh no, it's not. It's not yeah, it is mini driver. I mean, really driver person. Yeah, just the fucking people in the, oh. the dub. Hmm. Yeah, they get famous people for for Ghibli movies. Um, it starts out with this big wiggly worm guy, and um, it's this boy in the, uh, this village. I guess he's like he's like a, the prince, but just of the village. And uh, he beats this big uh, worm pig, but he gets touched by it, so he gets cursed. So he has to go on this journey to the west. Um, to um, to find this dear God to help him or something, and um, he has an he has an adventure, because he happens upon this conflict between humans and a whole bunch of other factions. Um, there's wolves who are sort of allied with the boars, and then there's the dear God who's sort of hanging out by himself, and then there's these people, and then there's the emperor's people who are sort of allied with the other people. And then there's the samurai who are a different, I guess. And they're, uh, they're fighting. Um, it starts out like, um, you could, I knew from the beginning it was like, uh, cause it was like, Oh, the, this, this demon pig was in pain. And I was like, Oh, the, whatever's in the West is going to be like pollution or some gay shit like that. And I was, I was right sort of uh, it was de- it was deforestation for iron because there's a city he finds a city he's an iron smelting city run by sassy hosts um who make the iron and um and he has a bunch of crazy st- they introduce a new like ghost animal every five minutes and uh, it's just a bunch of it's a bunch of stuff going on for for a long ass movie um, and at the end nature nature heals and uh it looked really nice it was good are you there <laughs> hey hello <laughs> okay he's actually gone thank goodness i was where i was just uh, i just kept going oh. oh there he is i'm back hey i was talking for a while before i realized you were gone thanks Grande was- communications I was getting very nervous. <laughs> I'm here. Uh, yeah. Where did I? Where did I lose you? Uh, you when you first heard about uh, the the boar was infected with some sort of bad stuff. Uh, yes. And you you had suspicions that it was probably the the result of human meddling. I think. Mm-hmm. Yes. And then I said, the only part you need to know is that I said he um. He, uh, he goes and finds an iron smelting city run by sassy hoes. Mm-hmm. And, um, true. Yep. And there's, um, yeah. And there's a whole lot of factions and they're all in conflict. And he's like, whoa, hey, hey now, everyone. Jeez Louise, can we maybe tone it down a bit here, fellas? Oh, and there's a girl, there's a, there's a girl named Princess, there's, there's Princess Mononoke is in it. But her real name is San. Yeah, which is like a girl named Miss. She's a she's a wolf lady. She just say it. She's fucking hot. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not. I'm not hiding anything. She's she's a she's a fox. I have nothing to. <laughs> well, she's um, a wolf, but she's not though. Well, she's not. She just kind of like she just thinks she is because she's mad about iron. Yeah. She's, um, a, she's still a little bit more feral. Yeah. Um, it looks very good. And they, 
they're introducing a new like weird ghost animal every five minutes yeah there's a whole bunch just, of them in that forest it just keeps every it's just like whoa now there's this weird supernatural japanese thing it just keeps happening mm-hmm. um yeah i don't know what to say about this movie well that's your first time ever watching a hayao's miyazaki film that is true uh he he's like I don't know what people, I think people probably compare him to like Walt Disney or like a Steven Spielberg, but he is, yeah. he, I would say Spielberg is an adequate comparison. He he just makes fucking immaculately executed works of, of his media. You know, he just makes like beautifully done epic narratives, you know, that are in anime form. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and this is, this is my favorite of his works. I like his other works quite a bit. They just get a little bit too whimsical at times for me. <laughs> and I, I like the edge, <laughs> you know, and, and, and I feel like everyone's getting their heads shot off in this movie by arrows. Yeah. Whereas you're not going to find that. I mean, there's, there's some of that in Nausicaa, but like, this is definitely his, his darkest and m- most mature movie. And not that like violence makes something more mature, but um, I, I like that he's, he targeted this one into slightly older audience. And uh, it's, I think it separates itself from other works in his catalog in that way. Whereas something like, a, I mean, not that I don't love Kiki's Delivery Service or Totoro, you know, but like, this is, I enjoy those as like a like kind of a fun, whimsical thing. Whereas this is like an epic work of animation. It's beautiful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but uh, did you enjoy it? Yeah. Did you, did you like it? Every it looked like a a pain in the ass to draw, mm-hmm. and um, but uh, but yeah, it was uh, it was good. Like I always, I always thought like his his style is like it's 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 good, but it's like it's very it's very like uh, not plain, but it's very even. Maybe a little, maybe a little you'll... simple. Like it, it's it's got a like the flat. There's not a ton like. The character design themselves are are uh, are not like the most hyper detailed, but this one is. There's a little bit more of that kind of '90s style, like you described, mm-hmm. going on. A lot of harder shading and stuff, where he doesn't really do a lot of high con- contrast work for the most part. Yeah, he. Uh, it's not like the you know, it's not like the most. He tries to keep it pretty, 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 t- pretty toned down in certain terms of style. It's not like the most. It's not like some crazy distinct art style. It's very like. You know, I don't know, but uh, yeah, it's it. There's a lot of there's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of, of, of creatures arguing. Yeah, I I, <laughs> I think I think something I like about it's in the same way that like I, I couldn't say that Steven Spielberg is my favorite filmmaker. You know, it's like Steven Spielberg has an amazing catalog of films and they're classics and they're some of the greatest ever, you know, but I, w- I don't think I would list him as like one of my favorite filmmakers. You know, I feel mm-hmm. a similar way about Hayao Miyazaki where um, it is, and this might just be a contrarianism fucking just, you know, like a, an insecurity or something, but it, there is something about his work that is necessarily mainstream and, you know, for, for the general population, um, that makes it a little difficult to, for me to truly love. Um, yeah, it's very, I, uh, it's pretty safe stuff. It's simple. Like, yeah. like Mononoke is a simple film and, 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 uh, and as is uh, spirited away, spirited away is, is like the most basic story ever. There's, there are no twists and turns in that movie. You know, mm-hmm. it is, it is just a, like, always heading forward towards the end of the film. And uh, I, I like stuff with a little bit more intrigue. I like things with a little bit more meat on their bones. And, and uh, this one does it for me because I think that the action set pieces are amazing. And I love like just the originality of the designs of, of the creatures in the woods and everything and the way he brings them to life. So oh, yeah. that's, what, that's what sets it apart to me. There's so much shit. Every frame is famous. I knew it. Um, I liked, uh, and I liked how, um, you know, like there's sort of an antagonist, but everyone is pretty like, everyone's very dignified, yes. very honorable. 
even like these pigs, this army of pigs, you know, as a cool leader guy. But that is it's like that shit's so good. <laughs> yeah, how they're all talking to each other very proper and uh Well, that's what makes it so epic to me. Is it's like it really feels like there's no joke characters. You know, it's like There's one uh, there's one guy in the Iron Village who's sort of comic relief goofy. Women are always making fun of him. But other than that, yeah. But it's it's like you feel like these are all their own cultures that have their own societies and everything. And that's part of like the world of film um, that you, you really kind of get immersed in. Uh, but yeah, like I couldn't really tell you much about the main character necessarily, other than he's a dude who's on an epic journey, you know? And he's cool. He, uh, yeah, he never, he never fucking flinches once. He doesn't care. Uh, the, mm. At the very beginning when he's fighting the demon boar, the first thing he does is like he just pleads with it. He just asks it to to leave, which is a cool thing to do. Yeah. To like a a, a demon god. Um, that's neat. Yeah, and then he's dying, and he's just like, "All right," and he just goes, you know. Uh, yeah, it it doesn't fall into like a lot of um, like black and white narrative tropes. It's more about um characters who have their own ambitions and their own motivations and like these these are about societies that are clashing you know not because mm. like any of them are evil necessarily uh, but because they have their own ambitions and their own needs it's like the people in the iron village they have a need for resources you know like yeah i was expecting need. that to be like to be eye rolling but it's like they're not uh, they're not just like greedy industrialists or whatever yeah. they're like they're doing this because it's their only choice because they used to be like slaves and uh and uh prostitutes and shit and it's like they're just they're carving out this living for themselves yeah and it would be it, it i mean it it would be fucking so brain dead easy to make them into just monster people <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know where it's like uh, you know ecological destruction bad Mm -hmm. You know, but uh, I, he has the maturity to address effectively what would be what would be the counterpoint or the antithesis, you know, or the antithesis, which is like there is a there is a need to survive in this world. And there are people who have circumstances that require them to use the environment for certain purposes, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, just just great mature filmmaking. Um, uh, it's not is dumb uh, it's it's this is this is uh again we've run into the summer of good and this is why i'm glad we watched uh two of them for this episode is because i think there's a lot to talk about with weathering with you yeah boy but, but, but when you have something like this it's like it's good i like it you know <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> and uh, weathering with you was really something to munch on i <laughs> fucking <laughs> yeah yeah uh, uh but i got uh, my noggin jogging well i'm yeah, glad was... you finally watched one of them high albums i finally did it and it's what I expected, but way more. God damn, there's so much, so much, uh, yeah, so many uh, mysterious woodland creatures. Um, I don't like the deer's face. It's too, it, they, they keep calling it a deer god. There's nothing deer like about it. <clears throat> it's ominous to me. It's, yeah, it's, it's a creepy dude. I'm glad it died. <laughs> it's the, I think that's the point of this movie. I'm glad yeah, the deer is dead. I think, I think Hayao Miyazaki, when he was interviewed about this movie, was like, yo, fuck that deer. Yo, that fuck deer. Fuck that fuck thing. Fuck Jannies. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Deer are gay. Yeah. Um, I want to kill them all. Yeah. It's that Louis C.K. bit. Just fucking cunt deer. Um... Uh, there's uh, it's San runs very fast, which is funny. Um, I didn't like how the wolves looked like rabbits. Mm. <laughs> this is the level of uh of analysis you get when the movie's good. Summer of good, everyone. Um, there's goop everywhere. The wolf heads are coming back to life. Last yeah, last fifteen minutes or so. Of this is uh, is wild. Um. Yeah. You've already seen this one. You've already seen this one person listening to this. I don't have to tell you about Mononoke. I just wanted Declan to watch it. <laughs> Some are good. Um, yeah. Did you watch the Blu-ray of this, I'm sure? Yes. Yeah. Probably look pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> God, it's... Uh, drawing all those tendrils... Yeah, there's, there's probably a, like eight people in ten months. You know, there, there's a lot of behind the scenes stuff for this movie in particular, um, mm. where where you can see a lot of content of 
of how yeah of doing like keyframes and stuff and like going over um over and over and over again making sure that him rolling after falling off of a horse looks perfect and <laughs> and then he's like no there's just not enough momentum in this uh yeah he's a, he's a master we I, I would be really cool as uh, expected to, of the master sasuga uh i would love to go to the mon- the, the fucking um ghibli museum or the Ghibli store or whatever next time we go to Japan. Yeah. Now that I've seen one, <laughs> maybe that, that would be something I would. Where is that? Uh, let's find out. Probably in like Tokyo. I would maybe, uh, or in like, is it a museum? I think there is a museum, right? Yeah. Kogane, Tokyo. Uh, yeah, there is quite literally a museum. It's in Mitaka. Uh, I, so I've seen, all of his stuff, except for the Western um, city. Oh. I've not seen his two most recent films. I've only seen. I've I, 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 I not seen. Um, fucking, um, gosh, what's it called? The Wind Rises, and then he has a new movie coming out. Right? I don't think it's out yet. Um, but I've not seen that, and I'm waiting for him to die. Oh, I'll watch so is he. I'll I'll watch his movies when he's his last movie when it's dead whatever it ends up being so um, I again like it, I the wind rises came out in 2013 I think and I just haven't uh, I'm waiting the next one is called how do you live that's oh him. yeah yeah it's for his grandkid it's uh it's explicitly stated that it is a film dedicated to his grandson I believe but it's named oh it's named after a 1937 book. okay interesting. Yeah, um, this is a big epic nature fantasy, and uh, it's there's a lot of frames, and there's a hot wolf lady. Look, it's just one of the best looking fucking animated films ever. You know, oh, that's what I was gonna talk about. My man gets baby birded. <laughs> Speaking oh, of Miko's nice. spit, she he gets jerky slonked into his fucking mouth by this by this girl. Hell yeah. I wish yeah. fuck fuck I wish that were me. <laughs> Imagine the smell. Imagine. Oh. Yep. Yeah, that was my takeaway. Um, well, yeah, there you have it, man. Good. Yeah, I don't uh I'm not gonna try and milk this one anymore. No, fuck know. it. We already you yeah. you got weathering with you. This was for us, damn it. Mm-hmm. I mean for me, I guess. I don't know. Cool. The summer of good continues. The summer of, of good will return in the next episode. Yeah, of gang stalking. Um, we should probably we should probably try to watch Razifon, huh? Yeah, but we we were also talking about doing that lane. Mm. Doesn't that sound appealing? It does. They both, yeah, you know. Um, well, yeah, Let's figure something out. Um, all right. Send us your recommendations. We won't. We may not listen to them during the summer of good, but we'll be back in the fall of bad. In the fall of um, autumn of mediocrity. <laughs> autumn of suck coming soon. Autumn of suck, which is my favorite Jeff Gersman song. Is it okay? I'll have to find that one. Not all, Not a lot of these are easy to find. Using like eight bands. Talking I don't really know what I'm gonna do staring at your ass. Tonight nice. shit pillows and she's got a lot of class. But I can tell deep down that she's ready to go to the gas station so I can hit her in the back door. Oh. Like Chuck Woolery, I'm an ass sex fiend. Left cheek, right cheek, my dick in between. Wax on, wax off that ass until it shines. Let's hit a public toilet so that ass can be mine. Ass sex is a game like pop out of trouble. And I'm looking for a piece of that bubble. So let you and me get in the handicap stall. One hand on the toilet paper, other on the wall. Don't scream or I'll have to put a sock in your mouth. Cause I really, really don't want to get kicked out of the 7-Eleven. This is where I play Kino and I really, really don't want to have to stop hitting you. My cock's an ass fucking hamster <laughs> Bite your lip, hold tight on the rail I hope she's 18 cause I can't make bail Half the fun is a thrill of getting caught With my dick in your ass and three fingers in your twat In a portolette or 
Ford Greyhound <laughs> Station. <laughs> Hope there's a sink for some dick sanitation. You crap hash hazards like the Lebanese faction. After the show, I get that eight swim action. I'm the being out plumber, just like Wesley Snipes with a little liquid drain to unclog your pipes. As I cramped in the ring finger of my hand, I wanted her to be a big U.S. pipe fan, but I'll just dig her out and leave her like the rest. That's the way it goes. I guess. That's right, you guess. In the can. In the can. You get it? The significance? I'm gonna fuck you in the ass in a bathroom. In a public bathroom. Not like your private home bathroom where there's a shower for you to clean yourself. I want you to be cleaning yourself with 7-Eleven stock brand toilet paper. I want you to clean off my dick with a toilet seat cover. Then I'm gonna get a big gulp. In the can, 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 in the motherfucking can, in the can, in the can, in the can. 